Welcome to the lesson Finite and Non-Finite Verbs After completing this lesson, you will be able to Define finite and non-finite verbs List the kinds of non-finite verbs Identify finite and non-finite verbs in given sentences Vicky and Harshit are walking to school together Vicky remarks that he enjoys playing sports Harshit tells Vicky I love studying. Harshit also says, Kevin loves food. On hearing this, Vicky asks Harshit why he used the word love for himself but loves for Kevin. Harshit informs Vicky that the word love is used as a finite verb. Vicky does not know anything about finite verbs. So, Harshit decides to tell him about finite and non-finite verbs. This is our chance to learn about them too. There are two kinds of verbs, finite and non-finite verbs. But what is the difference between them? Let us first look at finite verbs. Finite means bound. Finite verbs must agree with the number and person of its subject. Let us read the following examples. I love studying. In this sentence, the finite verb love agrees with the subject I. I is the first person singular. Now look at this sentence. Kevin loves food. The finite verb loves in this sentence agrees with the subject Kevin. Kevin is the third person singular. So we can see that the finite verb agrees with the subject completely. If the tense of the sentence changes, then the form of the verb also changes. Such a verb is a finite verb. It is bound by the tense of a sentence. For example, he works at the photo shop. The sentence is in simple present tense. The finite verb works agrees with the subject and as well as the tense. Now look at the next sentence. He worked at the photo shop. This sentence is in the simple past tense. As a result, the finite verb changes from works to worked. It agrees with both the subject he and the tense of the sentence. A sentence does not make any sense without a finite verb. A finite verb gives meaning to a sentence. Unlike finite verbs, non-finite verbs are not bound by tense, person or number of the subject. Let us read these two sentences. Richie hates working. My friends hated working. Both these sentences have finite and non-finite verbs. The verb hate is the finite verb. It is bound by tense, number and person. However, the verb working is a non-finite verb. It does not change even though the person, number and tense of the sentence changes. Thus, non-finite verbs are not bound by subject-verb agreement. Non-finite verbs are an extension of a sentence and sometimes can be left out depending on the situation or context. The sentence will still make sense without the non-finite verb. Look at these two sentences. We must go shopping now. We must go now. The first sentence contains the non-finite verb shopping. In this situation, we are aware that we have to go shopping. So if we say, we must go now, 
the sentence will still make complete sense. The action of shopping is implied. There are three kinds of non-finites. Infinitives, participles and gerunds. They are not bound by tense, number or person. Let us see how each of them is different. The infinitive consists of the words to plus verb. It simply names an action. For example, Sheila is going to wait outside the theater. The infinitive is formed by joining the words to and wait. The infinitive can be used as a complement of a verb or as the subject of a sentence. For example, I will ask him to come. The infinitive to come is used as the complement of the verb ask. To accomplish such a task is amazing. Here, the infinitive to accomplish is used as the subject of the sentence. A participle is a verb that does the work of both a verb and an adjective. Thus, it is a verbal adjective. For example, look at the burning candles. The participle burning acts as a verb and at the same time describes the noun candles. The participle has three forms. The present participle consists of the verb plus ing. For example, taking the book, Sam left the library. The past participle consists of the verb plus d or ed. For example, tired, he dropped to the floor. The perfect participle consists of the verb having plus d or ed or en. For example, having eaten is dinner, Tom went to sleep. Like the present participle, a gerund also ends in ing, but a gerund acts as a verb and a noun. So it is called a verbal noun. For example, painting is my hobby. In this sentence, painting is a gerund. It acts both as a verb and a noun. Remember that the participle and the gerund are different from each other. While the participle is a verbal adjective, the gerund is a verbal noun. Now that we have looked at finites and non-finites, let us read some more examples. Harshid has explained finite and non-finite verbs to Vicky. Let us revise the main points for Vicky before he reaches school. There are two kinds of verbs, finite and non-finite verbs. Finite means bound. Finite verbs must agree with the number and person of its subject. If the tense of the sentence changes, then the form of the finite verb also changes. A finite verb gives meaning to a sentence. Unlike finite verbs, non-finite verbs are not bound by tense, person or number of the subject. Non-finite verbs are an extension of a sentence and can sometimes be left out. Depending on the situation or context, the sentence will still make sense without the non-finite verb. There are three kinds of non-finites, infinitives, participles and gerunds. They are not bound by tense, number or person. The infinitive consists of the words to plus verb. It simply names an action. 
It can be used as a complement of a verb or as the subject of a sentence. A participle is a verb that does the work of both, a verb and an adjective. It is a verbal adjective. The participle has three forms. Present participle, verb plus ing. Past participle, verb plus d or ed. Perfect participle, having plus d, ed or en. A gerund ends in ing. A gerund acts as a verb and a noun. So it is called a verbal noun. While the participle is a verbal adjective, the gerund is a verbal noun.